All right, everybody, that was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio Headquarters right here in the 724 Lounge in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Yeah. I'm Pastor Padron. Are you? I'm here with my co-hosts, Nick hey. and Dave. Hey, and remembered. we have two very <laughs> special guests with us tonight, Keila Talia, back yeah. again for the upteenth time. That's right. She is a favorite, permanent resident here at <laughs> yeah. the Smoke Shop. And Joe Gonzalez, who is the New England area Ashton rep. Oh, yeah. And uh, what are we going to be smoking tonight there, Joe? We are going to be smoking the La Aroma de Cuba, Connecticut. The La Aroma de Cuba, Connecticut. Yes, now, that doesn't say Ashton. So what's no, what's this, what's not. the deal with that? So it's one of our brands. Um, this is actually Nicaraguan tobacco. Rather okay. Than Ashton's yep. Dominican for the most part. Mm -hmm. So this is a new one that came out this year. Thank you. Know. Oh, thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Here we are. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Look you're at welcome. that. We're doing the Toro mm -hmm. here. No, this is a size that I have encountered. I have not yet. had. Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Which one is so this? Is the, the Monarch. Monarch. The Monarch. Okay. Because we have the Robusto, the Amencia, and mm -hmm. El Jefe. Yes. All right. Let's give this a whirl here. I'm gonna give it a whirl. Yeah. I'm gonna give it. Take it out of there. I'm going to give it so much of a whirl, it's going to be <laughs> whirly. Don't whirl too much. That's what she said. <laughs> wow. All right. And Very away good. we go. So it's Ecuadorian Connecticut, and it's, Correct. you know, uh, Nicaraguan binder filler. Um, what's the what's the length and ring gauge on this baby? That this is so... Said. The Monarch specifically, this is going to be, obviously, it's not as big as a gauge as the El Jefe. Right, yeah. Um, so it's going to be in between that and the Avenza. Like, okay. So I really, I really like this size. I mean, this is probably the size that we could carry. Because mm -hmm. the only three sizes that we carry, which is in the regular size and the uh, the original and the and this Connecticut are the three sizes. The three popular sizes, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But this size, I mean... I mean, this is a good size. I can, it is. I can really get around, you know? I'm not too much of a fan of a big green gauge cigar. No? I feel no. like the more yeah. I learn about cigars and smoke more, mm -hmm. I find the smaller gauges are, are better. Like Coronas are right up my ass. Yeah, they're so delicious. I mean, Corona, Corona Gordas, mm -hmm. uh, Longsdale, Lance, yeah, Lanceros, all those delicious mm. sizes. Ooka chaka, ooka chaka. So, obviously tasting notes. I don't like to tell people what you're going to taste. Um, it's all subjective. <laughs> so go ahead and tell us what you're going to do. It tastes coffee, cedar, uh, some buttercream on the end is the finish. Oh, the buttercream, yeah. Amazing, which I think makes this cigar stand out from a lot of other Connecticut's. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you get into Connecticut, it's tough because a lot of people say they all just taste the same. Yeah. Right. Which I, you know, you can understand that because you taste a lot of Connecticut's and they all Correct. taste similar. But this one stands out to me with the finish. It's mm. it almost got like a sweet nutty buttery finish it's, it's good a lot of cashew in there all right mm. you picking that up dave i haven't lit it yet the you, cashew you doing a cold draw here you're doing a cold draw still cold draw cold draw uh nick what about you are you picking up the same stuff mm. i love the finish i mean the finish is just so creamy mm -hmm. <laughs> um it's that buttercream it is yeah. I, you said it. I was kind of giggling to myself. <laughs> buttercream. Right. <laughs> I used to make cakes for a living. <laughs> buttercream. <laughs> uh, and yeah, damn it, I got buttercream yeah. on it. Mm. Son of a mother. It's nice. But yeah, I, I mean, Ashton makes it. I mean, it's gonna be good. Yeah. So, Dave, is there sound going on? Oops. Uh, yes. Are we we live, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because people are saying there's no sound. Uh oh. No bueno. You guys muted. Mm. Nope. Nope, we're good. I can see it. I can see the audio. Hmm. Well, the bandwidth sucks, though, so that might be it. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -oh. Is this my drink or is this your drink? Because I don't mind my drinking your right drink. There. Mm. This is... Are we getting right into this? Mm hmm I was hoping so. Mm. Talia, tell us what we're drinking here. Mm. Because mm. I'm ready, and I had a little sip for the show. How can you a, not? Which mm -hmm. is a little sacrilege, nah. but I couldn't help myself. Please. 
God damn, this is so good. Please tell us what we have. In- yes. Okay. Turn the bottle the wrong way. This is the way I want to turn it. Okay. There you go. So this is the latest in the rabbit hole line. We've tried some other of the rabbit holes before. Mm-hmm. The high rye, the straight rye, the sea and the color. But you can really tell that kind of like stony fruit, almost that finish like you get from an Irish. Yeah. Where it's like sweet, but not yeah. that sugary sweetness. Yep. Mm. And that's why, I mean, you guys know I'm an Irish whiskey girl. So mm-hmm. that's why this one is my personal favorite. Because I love that finish from the sherry cask. Mm-hmm. It is just mm, so oh, smooth. Man, that's something like. Otherworldly. Oh, man, it's so hard. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just so good. I mean, you can have that with like a, with the steak, so with the exactly prime the rib. Steak. But mm-hmm. also, you can have some chocolate cake with that and be dandy. Maybe you cherry, can have chocolate cake with anything. Taste that's <laughs> true. I usually do. <laughs> but I'm just saying, oh, my God, it's just, okay. it's just so damn good. Mm. Dave, we good over there, brother? What's going on? You all right? Uh-oh. I think we're having some uh, technical difficulties at this moment in time, ladies and gentlemen. Please bear with us. And that's not just blowing smoke. Usually, yes. Yeah. <laughs> See, you, you just got to roll with the punches. Mm-hmm. You just got to roll with the punches. You know what punches. we should have? We should, you know those... Uh, when they cut the commercial or they have techn- technical mm. dif- difficulties and they have like that the picture. Cat or yeah. something. The cat, we should have Danny like just his head just smoking with a <laughs> pipe or a cigar. <laughs> we'll be right back. A little Stay jingle tuned. in the background. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> just my not goodness. just blowing smoke. <laughs> <laughs> something. Oh, my gosh. So, so uh, let's see. Let's tell you what what have you been up to since you've been on the the show last? Um, finishing up uh, our little power period goal. So just mm-hmm. crazy work trying to hit our. They give us every two months now to hit the numbers. Mm-hmm. You know they don't want us waiting until the last month of the year anymore. So they split it all up. So oh, it's like boy. I have a feeling you're probably <laughs> ahead of the game. Right I'm now. good. I'm doing good. Yep. I have that feeling that yep. she's like two months, please. Oh come on. I already I, did it in two weeks. <laughs> I mean, kind, kind of, yeah. I know you have. Look at here. That's why I'm in the third week, and I'm like, I'm good now. Yeah, <laughs> man. You don't have to do it. You don't have to go to work. You just call everything in from home. <laughs> Tell me, how long have you been doing this? Ooh, five years now. Yeah. yeah. Have you always been in like the liquor business, or? No, actually, um, I was in restaurants, but never mm-hmm. with a bar. So I was mm-hmm. always kitchen manager or line cook. Um, I bounced around for a little bit. <laughs> Between, like, I did car dealership, bank, graphic oh, yeah. designer, photographer. I, like, yep. went a little crazy for a couple of years, and then I found this, and I was like, yep, perfect. I'll stay here. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Rabbit Hole is one of the bourbons, obviously, that you represent. Mm-hmm. What are some of the other uh, Rabbit Holes in the uh, lineup there? So the three other ones are the High Gold, which yep. you tried first. Mm-hmm. So that was that High Rye Bourbon. Mm-hmm. That had that really high rye content, so it was mm-hmm. like over twenty percent. Um, and then there was the straight rye. Right. So that one's very spicy, but extremely smooth. Yeah. Which I don't like. Like I said, I don't like rye. So for me to like this rye whiskey is saying something. Mm. And then there's the Cave Hill. So that's the four grain. They have the honey malted barley. It's very that's sweet. That's the sweetest one. Yeah, I love it. It's the very Cave sweet. Hill. And yeah. Joe was saying that that was. Your favorite or your second no, favorite? No, no, no. Second this favorite, This is yeah. by far my favorite. That's the Der- hard to beat. The Derringer is Out of any sherry cast bourbon, which I love, mm-hmm. the Rabbit Hole is one of my favorites. It's too good. Mm-hmm. And the best part about Rabbit Hole is that even though it's at that, you know, 93, 95 proof for all mm-hmm. four of them, because they don't chill filter like we had talked about, all that oil, all that fat is still in the mm-hmm. bourbon. So it's mm-hmm. so That's smooth. That's what gives it that creamy, so buttery, that yep. creamy finish. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. Yep. yeah. It really does. It really glad. does complement the... Uh, it really does complement the cigar. Mm. Yeah, very, very this is good. the perfect cigar mm. for this. Yep. Nice. Have you ever smoked a oh. glass before like that? Oh my god. Joe? Many, many times. So you guys got to smoke <laughs> the glass because I mean, All it right. is. It's even better. Yeah. I so mean, yeah. A, the way to if you really want to infuse like a whiskey or an old fashioned or Manhattan, you yes. know, people get smoked ones. You see a lot of places, you know, they just put the smoke on top. Mm. And, doesn't really give the smoke the flavor. So mm-hmm. what I used to do when I was bartending, exactly what he's doing. Oh, yeah. I would get a decanter, put whatever drink you're putting in there, fill yeah. it up with smoke, and swish around, really let that smoke get into the drink. Mm. So he's probably going to taste it throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Dude, I mean, it is it is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Don't smoke it. Don't smoke ya. it, Danny. 
<laughs> yep, it, it yep. went up there. <laughs> it's really good, people. <laughs> See what it did to my voice. <laughs> my God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> my God. Okay, Selma. Oh. Mm. No, it just adds a whole it's caramely a, creaminess it's, to it's that. It's another level to that thing. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. so crazy. I'm always amazed how much it actually affects the flavor of the yeah. bourbon. Like, mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's, by itself, you get that really deep, rich sweetness that's mm -hmm. in there. And then when you're smoking it, you get more of a caramel, mm -hmm. caramel, caramel, caramel. So probably caramel? from those twice charred yep. barrels, you know, yeah. so you're getting that yeah. sugar mm -hmm. from the wood. Mm. Damn. I mean, the whole pairing itself, because the cigar really opens up your whole palate. To yeah. Every flavor, and you're getting everything from it. It's nice. And I'm surprised. Mm. I mean, this is probably the sweetest, smoothest, earthy, nutty oh. it's cigar. It's that approachable I've, to everybody. Yeah, yeah, that I've ever had. And I mean, mm. it's like, it's, it's no other Connecticut that I've ever smoked. Mm -hmm. And it's just so damn good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it stands out. It really does. Like, yeah. It's so good, Dave. So what made Ashton decide to do this, to add a Connecticut wrapper to this? So obviously, you know, this the, is... the, obviously the La Roma, you mm -hmm. know, the original line is one of their far-off bestsellers. Yeah. yeah. And everybody buys them. It's, yeah. a, it's an everybody cigar. It's not every like this. Mm -hmm. It's very approachable to anybody. Um, Dave will tell you that... It's that's... literally the first cigar every single day of my life. Yeah. Right. The La Roma de Cuba Robusto. I smoke it. Literally, I'm not even lying. Every it's day. a good everyday cigar. Every that time, first cigar too, in yeah. the morning. That's yep. other. You can smoke it at night after dinner too, and it's still it's, you know, it's, it yeah, does it's the just job. A, it's a perfect like all around cigar. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's really good after a workout. <laughs> Doctors <laughs> recommend I'm telling you. It's really good after a workout. Yeah. Um, Dr. Nick's advice. Everybody. After Absolutely. a good leg day, I like me a La Roma de Cuba. Uh, <laughs> good, good, good chest day. Yeah. Good chest day. <laughs> Work out those I mean, long. Hell yeah. <laughs> good chest day. Roma de Cuba on the yeah, back deck the watching the sun come up. Standard at our hook set store. Yes. That is mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Huge Absolutely. staple. People love that 60 ring gauge. Yeah. It's damn good. Well, it, it I mean, for the price point? I the mean, price it's like almost a two-hour smoke. Yes. Yep. It's great. It's hard to find something for that price, too. Yeah. No, you so. can't. Yeah, more and more. Mm -hmm. There's not that many cigars under 10 bucks that you I could heartily recommend, mm -hmm. especially at that size. Yeah, at that size specifically. I mean, sure. you can't. I mean, the only thing I, I would think the only thing in our walk downstairs that would have any competition would be Room 101 mm -hmm. and Asylums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, JFRs. And, and JFRs, too, but JFRs I mean... They're from the El Jefe, man. Yeah, that's... with the flavor in the El Jefe. Just, oh, I you know, mean, that's why they call it the El Jefe, baby. The boss. Yeah, it's the, the boss. Man. El Jefe, baby. Jefe. Boss. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so La Roma, obviously, we Go came Jeff. out that with this this, this past summer. Um, La Roma didn't have, you know, this Connecticut. Mm -hmm. Ashton has his Ashton Classic. San Cristobal has Elegancia, which is that light mm -hmm. profile. So, you know, I feel like La Roma really wanted, we really wanted to Bring something kind of round every, Yeah, right, give right. a little bit of yeah. options for everybody, you know, yeah. and this this mm. hits the spot. Yeah, I mean, with now with this in 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 the portfolio, it definitely checks off all mm -hmm. the boxes yep. for everybody. I yep. mean, and it's you nice. got everything. It comes in the same exact size as the original, so mm. it's and there's no it's not it's like a whole you have to remember a whole new cigar. Right, right, sizes. right. This is my favorite size in the Connecticut. I've had is the, it? I've had the Robusto, the Immensa and the Hefe. Mm -hmm. And the Immensa I I'm not a big ring gauge person either, but for some reason the Immensa really pops for me. Yep. This I like even more. I really I'm happy about it because I really wanted to like the Robusto, but the Immensa just gave me more flavor. But I, I I hope we bring in these Toros. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's very I mean, sneaky that way. Yeah, see how I did that? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. brought it in for us to taste. Yeah. Now I know how Kendra exactly. feels when, you know, Talia <laughs> comes up. Yeah. I was going to say, he's still got tricks my over here. Yeah, I mean, Dan, have her bring some already sour. I know. Now, oh, you know, man. he puts the screws to us because we're on live TV. Now, <laughs> now he's like, now we got to bring it in. Now we have to. So... <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> You're welcome, world. <laughs> yep. Sorry, yep. Kurt. Yep. Yeah. You know. So another 10, oh, another 10 box order right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. Sorry, Dan. Well, while we're getting into the cigar, let me talk a little bit about what's coming up at Twins. Yes. And then we can talk to you, Joe, and, mm -hmm. and uh, 
figure out who the heck you are and sure. how, how, how you ended up here. Yeah, that's a good question. That's a story. <laughs> that's a yeah, good question. That's a story and a half. So um, October 12th and 13th, we have events with uh, Roma Craft and uh, Mike Rosales uh, is going to be here for those events. And that's the 12th and hooks it from 4 to 7. And the 13th, uh, right here at, in Londonderry from 4 to 7. And at uh, 6 o'clock at the Londonderry location, we got we got the bar. So we can do things that, that hooks it can't. Uh, we're going to do a Roma Craft speakeasy uh, mm -hmm. for 20 bucks, And that's going to include a pairing with a, a Volstead cigar and a uh, Old Forester 1920 mm. uh, pairing. That's There's also going one. to be Prohibition Era finger foods and hors d'oeuvres. Now, you said that on the last food. show. You yeah. said that last Monday. I wanted to ask you about that, but we kind of kept rolling on with the pipe and everything mm -hmm. else. What What is 1920 or the... the, the what is that finger food? Bread. <laughs> like what? Just like just bread. Jeez. Like rations. <laughs> no, no. Like, no. Like, no it's what just, are we doing here? <laughs> What's going on, Danny? Believe it or not, there were a lot of sandwiches. Yeah. It was, it was like little simple sandwiches. Ah. So I, I'm not sure what, like the what they've decided sandwiches? on, Probably. but like it's going to be little, little finger sandwiches and stuff. But the whole, we we got a whole recipe and and things that are going to be put together just like they did in the 20s like porridge at no <laughs> it, <laughs> that's, that's not finger food uh, this is damn, not, that's this not, error, this right? not goldilocks it could be finger food. this one's okay. just right there are no bears here <laughs> <laughs> all right uh well, mike rosales hmm. is going to be doing a um presentation too on roma craft and of course the intemperance with a whole temperance movement yeah. that happened in the 1920s and uh, the whole play on words between the temperance movement and intemperance cigars, using that to build up awareness for uh, cigar rights. And, you know, just like the government was trying to to push down, you know, liquor with prohibition, they're doing that with cigars and tobacco. And so the idea is it's time for an intemperance movement. Yeah. You know? Shit. And, There's a lot they're trying to push down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's going on. And for people who uh, do this speakeasy, they're also going to get a special discount on box purchases mm. of Aroma Craft cigars. So, again, that's the, tw the 12th and 13th of October. And then uh, the very next day, oh, the cat came back. The very <laughs> next got, day, the 14th, the, the 14th, <laughs> uh, we're doing a pipe event, and it's called Pipetoberfest. Is Talia going to be there? No, Talia is not going to be there Ooh. because Hypetoberfest right. is right. about beer. So and Talia doesn't do beer. I don't do beer. She just she doesn't do, do beer. beer. Uh, so do we've beer. got Dan Leonard, who is the owner and founder of 603 Brewery right here in Londonderry. Mm -hmm. He's going to be here, and he has put together five different beer pairings mm -hmm. with uh, Briarworks Pipe Tobaccos. And for 25 bucks, you're going to get five beer pairings. And that will come oh, with, horrible. you can't drink beer without, <laughs> you can't, you can't drink beer without eating. No. So no. we've got uh, 603's uh, fresh soft pretzels and their beer cheese. Oh. And we've got mm -hmm. charcuterie boards from their kitchen. <laughs> I think I have now beer, beer cheese. Yeah. 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 That's, I, oh, yeah. Danny, so I think I might have to work my day off on that. Ty, Ty, might have be, Ty and uh, Nick might be showing up. Okay. I might have to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just tell the wife, be like, yeah, honey, they, they have down a couple guys. Somebody <laughs> went on vacation. <laughs> one guy's yeah. sick. You know, and the managers can't make cheese. it. Gotta get in I got to I got to do all day. Nine to, I nine to nine. All the time. It's, it's <laughs> always like, the on a nine to nine. Saturday of the month. You can plan for these things. You can put them in your calendar. It's and okay. Kaz Walters is also going to be there from La DC. Wait. It's, it's, it's going to be, be a little pipe show going on with, is Kaz. with Briarworks pipes. Is Kaz. Stavinelli pipes. Is Kaz. Peterson pipes. Is Kaz. Is Kaz. Please answer him. Is Kaz, Kaz, is Kaz, what is Kaz doing? Is Kaz, is Kaz <laughs> dressing up? I heard he's dressing up. He is oh. dressing up. Oh my lord! What like Halloween? Yes, <sighs> he's dressing up as Winifred. You have to give me more than that. From the Three Sisters and um, Hocus Pocus. Oh, oh yep. okay. The one that um. 
Bet Midler the old, play. Yeah, Midler the, play. Yes, okay. I know. Yes, yeah. he's just a winner. For yeah, there's just the name. If you me. go to Kaz <laughs> Walters' <laughs> Instagram page, you will find. If you scroll down, it's not all that far, but you will find him dressed up as Winifred. Oh my God! Really? And he's coming dressed up. That might be worth coming out. I'm on gonna a say that might. That's another that site. That's beer cheese. That's a site. That to beer see. cheese. <laughs> strong beer cheese. You know. And uh, it, we were having a special going on with the pipes so that if you buy Briarworks tobacco, you can get discounts on the pipes. Mm. Uh, if you buy two tins, you can get 10% off. If you buy three tins, you can get 20% off of any pipe on the table what? that will be offered. That's madness. It is. This it's is totally madness. madness. But it's twins, and we excel at mad events. Mm. Crazy events. Like losing mad mind events. Mad hatter crazy events. Like we, we should go cry. down the rabbit hole of mad events. Like that mm -hmm. rabbit. <laughs> like a rabbit hole, hole yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we, we should probably be in a wonder... mental hospital yeah. crazy <laughs> for doing the deals, which pretty oh, Kurt. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure if Kurt had more hair on his head, it'd tear it up. <laughs> Sorry. He has, a, he has a beard. And then uh, just a little preview here. We'll, we'll talk more about details as it gets closer on October 20th. We have Rocky Patel coming to the store. Rocky. Again, Rocky Patel will be here, and we'll have a big event uh, with that. And... Uh, from now until then, buying Rocky Patel boxes gets you entered into the chance to go with Rocky and Kurt up to Lake Winnesquam to a house for an overnight party. Oof. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> an overnight party, October 21st to the 22nd. Our... Assuming there'll be a non-disclosure agreement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, uh, just a little, just, just to kind of let, let you guys know that the 20th is Kurt's 60th birthday. So this oh, is yeah. like oh, a birthday weekend crazy. thing. So if you've got Rocky Patel putting together <laughs> a birthday bag <laughs> for somebody, especially a friend of his like Kurt's, it's going to be freaking wild you know your liver grows back right you know if you cut it off it does grow back not all of it obviously but i mean like if you damage it and or the reason that you brought this up was alcohol consumption alcohol. Is that real yes really yeah look yeah. it up yep. oh my now that's right, not and let's not encourage people to go out and <laughs> drink something they need to lose after i'm not condoning any back, i'm not condoning any uh, illegal activity or crazy Drinking or uh -huh. drinking and driving. Uh -huh. I don't condone that stuff. We learn do it, it in a safe place. Yeah. You come here to Twins. You can sit down at the bar. Do as I say. Don't do as I do. Have a rabbit hole. <laughs> and if you're lucky enough, mm -hmm. you can get to be on not just blowing smoke. <laughs> yep. If yep. you're lucky. That's it. You can trade in uh, 3,000 uh, VIP points, too, and get on the not You could do that. Yes, you oh. could. Mm -hmm. You could. Absolutely. You could. I thought it was so that. That's kind of what's coming up. That's kind of what's going on at Twins. It's a, that's a lot. You got a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. yes. Towards the yeah. end of the year, usually Twins is geared up. I mean, we usually have from October to December. I mean, it's crazy. And then when we get into December, it's like every week. Plus with the all the Christmas stuff and everything, yeah. all the packs mm -hmm. that we get ready for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, and I mean, then, it's the perfect place for it. Oh, yeah. You guys have yep. the indoor. You have the patio outside. Like, yep. Yep. We can do everything. All year round, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. So, Joe, what's what? <coughs> you just became the Ashton. What were you doing before this? Before this, so last three years, I was a uh, manager at a high-end whiskey and cigar bar in Charlotte, North Carolina. In Charlotte, North Carolina. Yep. Ooh. My yep. lord. A little bit nicer and weather. What? What? Yes. It's a little. It, did yeah. you grow up in in that no, area? No, not no. at all. So I grew up a small town um, in between Rochester and Syracuse, New York. So you grew yeah. up in New York. So I'm used to the I'm used to the snow. I'm ready for it this okay, year. Okay, you're ready for the snow. Yeah. Yeah. What brought you down to North Carolina? <clears throat> so the first time I went down there, uh, I was playing soccer in college, mm -hmm. a little bit right outside of Charlotte. Um, that's where I really fell in love with North Carolina. I have some family members down, down there. Sure, that's nice. After yeah. living there, I was like, okay, this is a place I want to come back. And then I was up in upstate New York, and then, you know, COVID happened. Mm. Jobs were tough. Everything was just tough. So I was like, let me go visit some family. Stayed down there for a week, two weeks, three weeks. <laughs> okay, I'm moving down here. A week turned into <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and then the cigar bar opened up. Basically, as I was looking for a job down there. Wow. So I started as a bartender and then moved my way up to management pretty quick. And Wow. Yeah, it was, loved it. Loved every every bit of it. So 
what kind of uh, establishment was that? Did it have a was it more bar with a few cigars, or was it like equal of both, or was yeah. it a little bit of bar with a lot of cigars? Yeah, so was... it was it was fairly equal. The the humidor was fantastic. There was you know. 300, 400 facings, different wow, cigars, nice. uh, over 200 whiskeys. One of the best bar managers you know, in, in the state had amazing cocktails. The bartenders were great. So really high-end stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was a membership bar. Uh, $25 would get two people in for the day. Mm -hmm. 250 would get you a membership for the year. And then there was locker memberships. $2,000 for a locker would get you access to the private lounge. Wow. And, a little bit of exclusivity, you know, yep. paying for it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Obviously, perks with that, but of course, yeah, really high end spot, really nice. People are great. You know, I'm sure you have the same here. You have the regulars. Yeah, those are the oh, yeah. those are the people that make it. We've got regulars. Yeah. Those are the people that make it. Oh yeah, yeah. they're all they're, sitting they're at the right bar. over there. Yeah. They're all, all right over there. there. <laughs> we know them all by name. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The best though. <laughs> yeah. you, you need no, that. We love them. Yep. Well, yeah, those are the, you know, those are the guys that make make twins run like mm -hmm. yes we do we work here and we manage it and everything but i mean the customers is what keeps the gears running in this place 100 yeah. percent. and we're fortunate we've, we've got great regulars absolutely all joking aside you know yeah. it's 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 fun to see everybody come back day after day yeah. you know yeah well you get in a, you get a certain a relationship with exactly you get in a certain relationship yeah. with them and it's just like oh how you doing oh how's this how's that and then you see people coming in hurt and you got a leg braces yeah. on and they're in a sling and you're like come on <laughs> man nothing yeah. against those guys i love them yeah. but i mean like you get to that that point in the relationship and you're seeing them every day and mm -hmm. you, you care for them you're like you don't want to see them hurt you want to see them come in you want to see them mm -hmm. having a good time here yep. so that for me that's how i feel yeah when you see guy you know when you see the customers come in like that and you're like damn man mm -hmm. come on you know you really feel for them because you get that connection because you see them every day mm -hmm. every day at the same time mm -hmm. or around the same time so it's you, you get that you get that connection with everybody. I like that you said that because so I've been in the bar life most of my you know adult life from yeah. eighteen nineteen to right now mm -hmm. before this and you don't get that with any other kind of bar. No, cigar bars are there's nothing there's nothing like a cigar bar. That's why I fell in love with cigars and you know I was in the bar industry. I like to make relationships, entertain people, mm -hmm. and bars good for that. But there was always a line where that stopped, and you know cigars is like that next entry. To it's the next level. Really knowing someone, talking to them, and you actually care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bar was just more, you know, come and go. It's quick. And cigars, you got to sit down, talk to someone. You it's come, laid you back, drink, and you get plastered. <laughs> you hang it out. Well, how many Fridays have I come in? I'm like, oh, I'm just stopping by. Like three hours later, I'm like, ah, crap, I didn't do any work today. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yep. Just hanging and with that, everybody at the, the bar. at the same time, you know, people come, you know, to a cigar bar to enjoy a, a usually a pairing with what they're smoking yeah. so yeah. people are not coming to get drunk you know messed drunk. up and they're party. not coming to coming to get hammered they're coming to have a good time coming to have to relax you know mm -hmm. to, and and so you know you're here for two or three hours but because you're talking mm -hmm. and because you're you know hanging out with people and smoking you, you know it's you end up having a really great time yep. and yep. um with a few exceptions most people drive themselves home mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and the ones that don't we make sure that they don't mm -hmm. they that's so, correct yep well it's definitely out of all the bars i mean how you know i go to so many bars every day mm -hmm. and this cigar bars are the only place where it's like obviously all bar bars are social but this is right. more of like an intimate social yeah. Yeah. where you're not just getting drunk and talking to somebody because you're both drunk and you got nothing better to do like you're right. just you talk to people because you want to talk to people mm -hmm. you watch a game you sit for hours yeah it's not just downtown where you're doing one here one here one here you know yeah you're sit you're sitting next to that one person longer for a long yeah and then you start oh what are you smoking oh, i'm yeah. smoking this oh you got a pipe i got a pipe too mm -hmm. oh what are you drinking oh you should try this with that you should go downstairs go talk to Danny or Mark mm -hmm. or, or Bobby or me or Dave. Oh, oh, go talk to them. Ask them about this cigar or this yeah. one. And and then it just starts rolling yep. after that. Oh, what what do you what do you do for a job? Oh, I do this and this. Oh yeah, how many kids you got? Oh, I got two kids. Oh man, I don't got how no many kids. kids you got? Yeah, <laughs> I don't got no kids, but I got dogs. And, you know yeah. what I mean? Stuff like that. Yeah, it just yeah. starts rolling. And yep. you get it's easy. You're, you're, it's very it's easy. easy. And the common thing that I, I tell everybody I love about cigar bars or just smoking cigars with people is 
the common trait is the cigar yep. that mm -hmm. gets you in. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, live in the Hamptons and I live downtown Lawrence or yeah, whatever. It's a great equalizer. It's yeah. a great equalizer. It's it's just it gets you in because you, you're on that common level. You when you're here, yep. everybody's the same. It doesn't matter if you're smoking a Davidoff or from the six dollar bin. Mm -hmm. Everybody is the same here. Mm -hmm. Nobody is different. Everybody is equal. You walk through that door. Everybody has that one goal. Yep. It's to sit here and enjoy a cigar yep. and a drink. Bam, right there. That's a Rarely great equalizer. Rarely will you—you'll never see someone leave a cigar bar in the a worse mood than they came in. Nope. Mm -hmm. That's that's mm -hmm. if they do, that's they did something. To they them, did something know. wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that's on that. But uh, it's user error. Yeah, yeah. yeah big time. They took a bad crazy. phone call from the wife or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, true, <laughs> true. But no, so I was saying for my bar, you you touched on it. Yeah, it's like the only kind of place where you have you know a CEO of a company. You'll have a college student, you'll have a janitor, you'll have a professional athlete at the same table. And no one cares, no one's judging anyone, no one's above anybody. Everyone, we're just here. Yep. Sharing stories you know, and loving mm -hmm. it. I think one of the big reasons for that, at least for someone my age, I'm mm -hmm. 27. So it's a weird generation, but I'm, I know. I'm an old 27. 11 years older than this man right yeah. here. <laughs> Holy Jesus. I'm six years older. <laughs> I'm, 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 like a, I'm like me. a lot over. <laughs> Kenny's like 30 years old. Uh, uh, but I'll say the biggest reason is he could the, be my the phones. Mm. When you have a cigar in your hand, you know, it, it's taking up your hand and you're, you're not on your phone. So you've you got to talk to someone. Right. You want to talk to someone. Yeah. So I, every other bar you go to, you know, everyone's just on their oh, phone. It's brutal. It's, it's hard to have real conversations with people mm -hmm. nowadays. Yeah. That's not even bars the person you're like, with. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Cigar <laughs> bars is a place you can always go, and you know, you're going to have good conversations. Yep. Yep. Yes. That's true. Yes. It's nice. Oh, yes. All right. So you're there. You're at this great cigar cigar bar in North Carolina. You're managing. You're at the top of the game there. Now now you're living in Nashua, New Hampshire. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened Whoa. to my dream? No, it has not. <laughs> no, it has not. Yeah. Said no one ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, like I said, I really fell in love with cigars. Yeah. A lot. Quickly, and, you know, you learn quick. The more you're into it, you learn quick. Same with mm -hmm. whiskey, wine. Anything you're really mm -hmm. into, you're going to learn quick. And it was the relationship side of things that I really loved. Mm. I wanted to learn more about cigars in the industry and the business. And, you know, I was like, well, I would love to be a rep someday. Like, back of my head i don't know if that would have happened you know i've only been here for a little bit but mm -hmm. opportunity came and said well i'm closer to home to my family in new york so that would be great if i could get this and also ashton is one of the better companies you could possibly work for for cigars yeah for rep. so it, everything just lined up perfectly timing was great but were you looking or did they reach out to you how did how did you how did you find out about that i mean I, you're not in new england you're yeah. in freaking north carolina yeah. how did, you no, want to I was come looking. up to New England and be a rep for Ash. I mean, how did that how did that happen? <laughs> no, I was looking for a change, something different. You know, I was like I said, I was in the bar life, Mike. Mm -hmm. And you know, it wears on you. The management. So you were ready. You were ready. You were looking for something. Sure, exactly. Okay. And you know, right. I wanted to learn more. I'm I'm okay with adapting and moving and you know, I'm maybe we'll move from Nashua next year when my lease is up. But uh <laughs> it's coming, we're looking. It's we're looking. Nashua's good location wise. Nashua's not terrible, but No, no, it's not. No. It's not. It's okay. But yeah. So that's where I am now, and, you know, like I said, I'm five hours from home, so I can mm -hmm. go home on weekends. So I have weekends off, which that doesn't happen in the bar industry. Oh, no. Weekends off is What's so that? nice. What's that? That's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's the first time <laughs> so, in my life. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know what that is. It's, yeah. it's, it's like I a whole had, new life. I had that for a few months, and now yeah. it's gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, I'm telling you, when I got this job, I was like, wait, I don't have to work Saturdays. Or just two days off in a row. Mm. Yeah. Like, this is the I first saw. time I've had that. That's crazy. It's nice. Mm -hmm. Not working, like... 14 hour days mm -hmm. <laughs> that's crazy so now you've you've seen twins and mm -hmm. you know how do you think twins holds it holds its own to other oh yeah high-end cigar bars and stuff like that yeah so I, it was completely different vibes yes like, from the outside people would think oh like that you know people might judge it but at the end of the day like i said the regulars the people it's all about how people feel and if you can provide that which is something you can't pay for. Mm -hmm. You can't provide that experience and that vibe. Yep. And this place provides that. It that's yeah, its own category. Kurt, Kurt, you know? Kurt's way of his vibe was to create a place where there wasn't a VIP thing where mm -hmm. you weren't paying to to get in. Mm -hmm. um, 
and he didn't want lockers. He didn't want the responsibility of watching <laughs> somebody else's stuff. It's a lot, you know. But <laughs> and and you know, <clears throat> there's no there's no um, uh, going around and checking to make sure you got your cigar from here. You better get your cigar from here because that you don't go buy a yeah. Big Mac at McDonald's and go sit at Burger King because you like their lounge better. I wonder mm. what you know? would happen if you did but, that. <clears throat> but it, I kicked no, people never, out of my restaurant. <laughs> in, in no other, with the in no other like, industry does that happen. Yeah, in no other yeah. industry do people try and do that and bring stuff from another place. That said, we don't check. There's no cutting fees. There's nothing like that. And, and But this is a place where you know, if you're a college student, mm -hmm. like you were saying, or Anyone a blue collar worker, you're going to feel like, hey, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And if you yes. are, you know, a successful person or, you know, and, and well off, you own your own company or whatever, you're going to come in and like, this is a great place. They got everything that I want. Mm -hmm. And and everybody feels comfortable. Here. Yeah. Everybody feels comfortable. If you can create here. that, like I said, and that's, that's that. awesome. And his selection of bourbons and scotches and Mm -hmm. And tequilas is second to none. I haven't seen any place in New Hampshire that has no. No, this selection. It's tough. We goes. were talking about this last week. It's tough for me to go somewhere, even to go out to eat. It's tough to be like, look at the the bar and try to pick something from there. And it's yeah. like, <sighs> uh, it's like cringeworthy because yeah. I'm so used to seeing the selection up here and being mm -hmm. like. I already know when I when I walk into work after if I wanted a drink I already know what I'm getting, Belvini, Blue Label, Scotch, Art Bag, Big Shot, Talisker, yeah. something like that. I love my single malts and peated mm -hmm. scotches, Tart, but I mean you can't get that anywhere. I mean you got to go to really high end high end places to even get close to what we have, and it's tough. And it's like oh my god, I'm gonna have to phone Talia and be mm -hmm. like yo wait. <laughs> Where you at? Because I need, I need a drink. I need something. <laughs> something, man. Tell me where to go. I need a 911 tell you yep. over here, man. For real, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Something yeah, like well, that. Seriously. Mm. Hit her on the beeper. Hey, 911. come on now. You got yep. my number. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Yeah, no. Kurt did, and every, all the staff, Kurt, all you guys did a fantastic job with this place. Appreciate it. It's, it's Thank nice because I'm, I'm not too far away from here either. So No. It's nice to have this close by, you know, a fantastic lounge like this. So, and I even knew about this place before the Ashton Jobber coming mm -hmm. up here. So, you guys are doing a good thing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, now, how do you like living in New England? I, I do enjoy it. You know, the summer was amazing. Talk to me in a few months. <laughs> I'm from Rochester, New York, man. It doesn't get worse. Hey, yeah. I mean, it's... It doesn't get worse. He's <laughs> used to it, I'm sure. He's yeah, it's... Uh, it. We'll see. It's cold. I'm sure he's used to it. It gets yeah. cold. The only thing that I don't like about New England is... is the, I was going to go as far as saying that the, the hot weather leaves, but, I mean, mm -hmm. I've been here all my life. I mean... Just it's a it's a crapshoot. Like the past five years has been a crapshoot for the summer. I mean, yeah, this yeah. summer it was the most rain last I've ever summer. Been. So the best much year rain. we had was COVID. Twenty twenty was the weather year of yeah, the it was. It was. It was. You know, it was the most beautiful thing, and nobody wanted to do anything. Well, <laughs> I had COVID. Everything everything was closed. it was COVID, <laughs> man. Everything, everything was closed. Was closed. You couldn't go to the beach. You couldn't <laughs> go to the mall. You couldn't and do anything. It was great because you went outside and the air was clean because nobody. Yeah, was yeah. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> that's that's a good awesome. point. Yeah, that's a good. I point. didn't mind that time off. It was kind of you know a nice reset. We worked. Mm. Did you? We worked. Me and yeah, we never closed. Yeah, we never closed. Yeah, me, Danny. At the time was Paul was Zeke yeah. at the time, and uh, we were doing uh, curbside. My God, it was curbside. It was like it was almost fast to the point. food cigars. Yeah, you know? it was to, almost to the point where we were almost going to do open one of the windows. Well, at the time, the windows didn't open at the time. Yeah. but we were going to try to get one of the windows open just to do drive through. Yeah, just to have people just come up, just mm -hmm. give it to them. They already paid over the phone, and that's it because most of the people paid over the phone at yep. the time. And we were just running. They there were running so many Good benefits you that you know you never had to count cash anymore. No, you didn't have to deal with customers Maybe hanging around the humidor for 25, 30, 40, 45 <laughs> minutes, looking at everything like they're in some you know the, the Louvre or whatever. You know. Well, oh, to some people, that. it is the Louvre. I mean, yeah. Oh, did you to, see that? Oh. Yeah. Do you oh need any God, help? No, cigars. I just want to look. 
<laughs> yeah. You know, you've seen those people at the liquor store, too. They just uh -huh. hang around for hours and hours and hours. Well, I mean, you got to... And then they leave with the same bottle that, that they, they, were get, they yeah, get. The And it's the same thing here. They'll leave with the... <laughs> so we didn't have to deal with that anymore. And it was like, oh, this is really... Maybe we but shouldn't But you can't tell me... Again. You can't tell me, Danny, that you didn't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After a couple of weeks of that, I missed the interaction with people. Mm -hmm. Talking to people, knowing what they wanted... They, you know, something different, what they usually get, mm -hmm. and they wanted to try something new, suggestions. For me, for me, I'm a big people person. I love to, to, really? to talk and interact. Yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, really? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I missed that after, like, a week of doing drive through yeah. I was like, oh, God, when true. are the people going to come back? Yeah. <laughs> I missed it after a day of being in the attic, ripping out the old HVAC. Yeah, oh, that, that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was necessary. It was necessary. Mm -hmm. We needed to do that. Yes. The worst Definitely. part of the whole thing for me was that they shut down the day before St. Patrick's Day. That they did. I spent That's two right. I sell James. I remember at the bar, and they were like, at mm -hmm. 5 o'clock, you have to close. And we yeah. could work half the day. It was the weirdest yeah. thing ever. So we get a call from the boss man. I just spent two and a half months prepping for St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. Had everything lined up. We get a call, 6 o'clock. Yep, so he decided to shut down, so I guess uh, no work any, like no working tomorrow. Oh. We were like, are you kidding me right now? I remember that. All mm. my bar owners sitting on cases upon cases yeah. of James. I worked at a better bar at the time, so like, we were benefited. ready to go. Oh, yeah. oh, and, now oh. I have to drink all this? <laughs> yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that Jameson numbers look real rough. At the end of that year, <laughs> nobody was buying anything for no. months and months. Mm. Yeah, and then oh. the, all the shortages and shipping yep. and glass yep. shortages. Oh, my God. Yeah. I remember yeah. uh, after COVID, we couldn't get Jack Daniels for a couple months. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, Daniels that was glass a glass shortage and yep. everything was top. Was a problem. Yeah. Oh my god! And then the liqueurs and everything was. Mm -hmm. Oh my uh, god! Way worse. Way worse. But yep. glad we're through that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Finding toilet paper. Clean oh. up. What was the deal with toilet yeah, paper? COVID know. had people nothing to do with needing toilet people paper. Oh, people would go in and buy like. Five lifetimes worth of toilet, I toilet paper. I know that they did, but why did they do it? I mean, there was. I, it wasn't like COVID I gave you the run. I runs. remember watching a. a, a guy, <laughs> so they never had a to leave the house. guy that I watch on YouTube, and he he like you know I saw this person check out with like twelve of the twenty four packs of toilet paper, mm -hmm. and he calculated it. If he if they had like a family of five, they could if they use like four sheets a day or four <laughs> sheets like how many times you go to the bathroom a day like two or three times and he calculated out that they would they would have enough toilet paper until they were in their 80s well, this guy's ruined it for a nobody, I paid he obviously, he obviously nobody doesn't know how my daughter used the toilet yeah, four paper. Sheets kind of four sheets are kind of sketchy. Four sheets, Dave. <laughs> I get yelled at all this time. My goodness. <laughs> Who uses four sheets? Dave. Do you? <laughs> You use four sheets. That's it. Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. That's a great. That's a great segue for the 724 flashback. Flashback. Uh, a flashback. weekly flashback. segment yeah. highlighting historical events, brought to you by 724 Cigars. Smoke a piece of history. Absolutely, mm. unequal. All right, uh, September 25th. It turns out today, it, it, when this show is being recorded, September 25th is a big day for celebrity birthdays. Oh, whose birthday is it? Nicholas well, Cage. First off, we have Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh. <laughs> oh, her best movie, Entrapment, with Sean Connery. Hundred percent. Woo! Uh, I liked her in The Mask of Zorro too. Oh. oh. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! Like I the, mean, he, all that the movie movie he, was, he was very vigorous. Oh. Very <laughs> very vigorous. vigorous. <laughs> <laughs> that was movie. oh, she was I mean, so hot in that movie. Anthony Hopkins was pretty good in that one too. I yep, yeah, he Jesus. did. He did yeah, good. So true. she was born in 1969. She's 54 today. Is she? 54, and Damn. still looks quite. And she's good. married to Michael Douglas, right? She's still married to Michael Douglas, right? I believe so. But I'm not going to say that for and sure. And he's like in his 70s Yes, right he now. is. As a matter of fact, Good it's for also him. <laughs> Michael Douglas's birthday. Yeah. Hey, hey, are you serious? Yep. yep. That's a hell of a party right there. He's 79. No way! Wow. 79. Huh? They have the same birthday? They have the same, same birthday, yep. That's yeah, a hell of a party right there. My ex and I had the same birthday. That's cool. it's, You think so. I, I mean, feel it's like It's not your birthday stuck. anymore. Yeah, that's you know, good your point. Birthday. Not your birthday. Like, that's their birthday. Yeah. So if you're a big birthday person, it's not a good thing. But. Damn. On this day in 1968 was also Will Smith's birthday. 
Really? Big Will Smith's birthday. Big Will Smith. And in 1961, Get your uh, birthday she's out now 62. <laughs> <laughs> the 70s, that was a good one, bro. That was the good The 80s, one. Hottie right Heather Locklear. Was oh, woo! Crush. Did there any of you have the poster hanging in your room, Heather, Heather Locklear? Who did I did, growing up. Who did I did. It? I had Farrah Fawcett. Wait, sorry, not she sorry. Now? She is 62. She was, good for um, her. Yep. So my she's she's had years old. My, my, and my also, <laughs> also today, see what I mean? This is a big day for celebrities. Mark Hamill. Wow, wow, yeah. Mark Hamill, 1951. Uh, the voice of the Joker. 1951. Yeah. yeah. 72 years old. Oh, wow. wow. Really? 72 today. God. Love you, Mark. Damn, You're the best, man. Wow. Yep. So we've got them. some exciting stuff. I mean, just, I couldn't believe all the birthdays. Yeah, that's and awesome. Those are all people I'd Big love people. to meet or, or have stock. a cigar with or something. Stock. Mm -hmm. Stock yeah. for like a day. <laughs> I'd still, I'd still sit with Catherine Zeta Jones. That would be of freaking course. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh my goodness. So what's Whew. what's our final thoughts here on the uh, La Roma yeah. de Cuba? Connecticut? All the way through. How do you guys like it? I mean, surprisingly delicious. Yeah. Definitely getting that buttercream finish. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All the way through. Oh, didn't change. So good. Smooth, creamy, earthy, nutty. And the finish was remarkable. Yeah. If I smoked this much without having any alcohol with it, that's saying something. Because yeah, I go. never smoke cigars without drinking. So yeah, I drop. like this a lot. If you had to pick anything to pair it with, Ooh. what would you do? Anything. Other than this rabbit hole? Sure, because this is fantastic. This is a perfect yeah. pairing right now. Mm -hmm. I'd probably. bourbon. Smooth ambler. Yep. I that's would fine. go. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a. I don't know if it's a it's new sweet. bourbon, but I bought it last week. No, I bought it a few days ago. I'm already done it. Um, Why am I not surprised? You shouldn't be. Uh, it's called Ammunition Bourbon, mm. and it is finished in Cabernet casts. Holy yep. mother of Jesus. Yep. I mean, you can drink it like water. Trust me. <laughs> Cabernet cast. Uh, I love Hayden all these barrel finishes yes. that they're playing with. I mm. love it. Yep. The barrel cognac. Bourbon. You know barrel cognac? bourbon? I have not had that. They're, they're doing... Insane finish at rum casts, yeah, all types of casts. Every almost every bourbon they come out with is different. That, finish. that, uh, what was it? That, Ava, uh, was it Avalon Resposado? I'm gonna put you Avalon. 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 What are you close? You, you're still That's from King Arthur. Yeah, you got, got the first couple letters. <laughs> Avalon. Avalon. Mm, Merlin. From the Zohan. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that. I love me some Merlin. <sighs> Who doesn't? <laughs> Merlin was the man. Oh my goodness! He knew yeah, magic. great, awesome cigar. So very nice. At this point, we're going to switch over. I don't know how many people know or not, but Ashton also makes pipe tobaccos. Mm -hmm. Surprise! And you are the the first rep that I've had, and we uh, you're like number three <laughs> okay. that I've lived through. You know, in, in my time uh, with cigars back in New England. And you're the first one that's actually, you know, agreed to bring in some Ashton pipe tobacco. tobacco. Yeah. And so, what do we got? We got the uh, Consummate, Consummate Gentleman. Yes. Consummating the And gentleman. this is a, uh, um English mixture uh, that Ashton makes. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the tin, it says, a proper English mixture composed of only the finest Virginia, Maryland, and Burley tobaccos with a pinch of Latakia. Pinch. The result is a remarkable blend that is medium-bodied and traditionally English in character. And it's actually, it's manufactured for Ashton by Coles and Kopp, which is a very famous and, and uh, well-known uh, group over in Denmark. And um, uh, English blend, obviously. There's no flavoring on this. It's a ribbon cut tobacco, mm -hmm. and um, it's very, it's it's a very nice kind of all day English. And for those of you watching, this uh, we have another first on the show tonight. This is Joe's first time smoking a pipe. Dun, 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 dun. Mm -hmm. We are going to be teaching him how to smoke a pipe. We did a little. Uh, pre-show packing with him. Sure did. Little and introduction. Help get him going and everything. Yeah. And it looks like he's taking off. Um, but I'm excited to know what he thinks about uh, the tobacco and and 
you know, that this new to you anyway, yeah. and frankly new to me. I, this is my first time having the tobacco. Oh my! You know that that Ashton produces this too, and it's a completely different flavor line than their cigars. Mm -hmm. Now, full disclosure, I am definitely an English guy, but I wouldn't imagine <clears throat> pair it with this rabbit hole. Ooh. Being so sweet and just so rich, I would think I would want to go with just something of a, a straight bourbon or a whiskey or, you know, a peated scotch with, with the Latakia. But I had a sip of my last sip of the whiskey, and then I had a pull of my pipe, and Jesus, yeah, it was good. That is nice. <laughs> Oh, the sweetness. It brings more sweetness out mm -hmm. in this pipe tobacco. It's yeah, I think mesquite, it's a good pairing. Mesquite yeah. taste to it. That's that's the biggest thing I'm picking up is like a mesquite. Mm -hmm. like barbecue a mesquite kind of sweetness. Yeah. Yeah. A mesquite, yeah. Smoky mm -hmm. mesquite. Mesquite. I think this would go with <laughs> almost any sherry cask finished yes. whiskey. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Talia? Well, you just said it. <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll go good with any Ooh. sherry can whiskey <laughs> oh my gosh dave uh what are your first thoughts here oh man this is so good man it's very wow. smooth it's uh it's definitely got some cream to it it's got this nice um uh, mesquite and sweet biscuit sweet biscuit Mm -hmm. mm. It should go nice with the Avium 44, too. It would. Do you like Mezcal? No, I no? don't. You no? Do. This would be fantastic with Mezcal. It like, would be, yeah. Smokies. I'm not a smoky. Like, I don't like the peated scotches. Mm -hmm. I don't like the Mezcals. I'm not a big smoky That's in my drink. That's why she gave me the dirty look when I started seeing peated scotch. She's like, why? There, I did. I gave you that stink what? guy. She's like, what? I heard Johnny Walker Blue, and I went, <laughs> <laughs> on occasion <laughs> only if it's free <laughs> <laughs> only if it's free <laughs> if somebody opens a bottle and offers me a glass i am not refusing john no, blue no you can't mm. i mean I look for john <laughs> blue <laughs> you would <laughs> sorry young lady if you haven't met me <laughs> all right no, i got, I I got a rabbit hole right uh this there's not much I don't turn down there. <laughs> I so know this mind. about you, honey. <laughs> I just, mm -hmm. yeah. That's yes. Right. Mine? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mine? Oh, does that, who needs yeah, a refill? Mine, mine's the empty glass. Well, who needs I didn't refill? see her, so let's go now. Oh. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, if somebody's opening up a bottle of blue, I'll have some. Now, will I go and buy a bottle of blue? I mm -hmm. No, nah, I probably you. wouldn't. Okay? You I would definitely do a Glen Fit It. 12 over a bottle of blue any day of the week. Glen Marangi 10. Yeah, man. Glen Levitt 15. Yeah. yeah. The Belvini yeah. 14 is. I mean, I look, have that at the home. Glen Fit at 21 is a better buy all day, every day yep. than a Johnny Blue. I believe it's cheaper as well, too. It's like $20, oh, yeah. $30 yeah. cheaper. Mm. Yep. It's crazy. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Talia. You're welcome. Beyond yep. steak. Beyond steak is fake steak for those who are watching. <laughs> Don't eat Beyond steak because it's fake steak. Yeah. Go to your local butcher and support <laughs> your local farmer. Yes. Because Absolutely. that is the best meat. Mm -hmm. Like Farmer Phil. Mm -hmm. Farmer Phil. Mm -hmm. I love you, Farmer Phil. If you're I'm watching. A, you know, I'm a vegan because. No, you're not a vegan. Because you're not because a vegan. My, the cows you're not that I eat vegan. are vegan. Yeah. That's true. So they eat grass. I, yep. You are eating grass. Yep. So by default. I'm a vegan. And are we grass? are smoking grass. Well, not grass. Plants. We're smoking plants. Mm -hmm. So we are all vegan <laughs> by definition. It's basically a salad. I, you're yep. smoking a salad. <laughs> right, Danny? Yep. Smoking a salad. Yep. There you go. Yep. You know, Danny, I watched. Indiana Jones and the, Des the Dial of Destiny. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that the yeah, English one? I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I'm sorry. It was. Oh, it was. God. It was a little painful mm -hmm. to watch Harrison Ford at that age 
do another Indiana Jones. Like the last one with Shia LaBeouf uh-huh. was good. Here's I mean, one. that they should have ended it. They should have been like, okay, he hung up his hat. That's it. It's over. Hang up the hat and the whip. It's done. But no. They had to, they had to push him out in the wheelchair. Say, go again. <laughs> I feel like they do that with just, movies too much now. Oh, way too don't, much. Don't do it, Maybe man. To death. I mean, to damn. Death. I mean, I love Indiana Jones as, next, as much as the next guy. <laughs> Indiana yeah. Jones and the nap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The exactly. nap of yeah. destiny. Yeah. I mean, the nap of destiny. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean hey, like, uh, it was just watching. So in the first quarter of the movie, in the first, you know, the first part of the movie, they CG'd his face, a younger face, on another uh, actor, and they were going through it. And immediately for me, because I've watched all the Indiana, Indiana Joneses for the longest time, and I was like, "Wait!" I'm like, "He doesn't move like Indy. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't hold the whip like Indy." I'm like, "I'm like, this is crazy." I'm like, and then they got into his later years where he doesn't do the CG, and it's just him, mm-hmm. and he's like. It's like moving really slow and it looks painful. And I'm like, oh, oh. and it was just hard. It was hard to watch. Like some of the stuff was, I mean, like the essence of Indiana Jones, like the plot that twist. Was still there. It was still there yeah. and the whole, um, you know, the archaeology stuff and everything like that. Yeah. It was like the essence of that. All that was there. And I really enjoyed that because I, I'm kind of a little bit of a history buff and all that. And I love the history and everything. And you know, finding all the stuff and everything, it just it was it, it grabbed me. Mm. But when you when you see the old Harrison Ford, you kind of feel bad because I know they kind of held the paycheck in front of him and been like, mm-hmm. "Come on, let's do this one time, one more, one more time. time." And you're like, "Damn, he just took the bait." Have you seen uh? Have you seen any expendable movies? Yeah, I've seen all. Have couple. you seen? There's another one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It all it made eight million in its <laughs> opening weekend. I'm gonna watch. Well. It. I'm going to watch it, too. I'm, I'm going to love it. I'm a sucker I, I, for I, I, all those guys. Well, that same with John Wick. Like, I'm going to mm-hmm. watch it. Oh, yeah. I know, but Keanu Reeves is, 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 a, is a mastermind when it comes to that. I mean, he overtrains, you know, Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and ke- uh, uh, not, uh, proper keto. gun training. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, well, he, went had... to, he went to training with Terrence Tactical in, yep. in Vegas. I mean, <laughs> that's the guy that you need to go to yep. if you want any any gun training for any movie. I watched Everybody an knows with him, and he was like, you know, I hear you're you're like you do action, the you do action stunts, but not all of them. And they asked him to explain what that meant. He was like, well, basically, there's like, you know, there's like gun fighting and gung fu and stuff like that. And then John Wick will get hit by a car, and that's when I step out. And the stump double comes in, and then he gets hit by the car, and then you know John Wick gets up. So then I get up and I start doing my stuff yeah. again. So he's well, like that. who wants to get I hit by all, a car? I do everything you know what I mean? Except that. So. <laughs> well, I mean well, that's wasn't there relevant. Actor, wasn't so there like another that. actor who did that too? Like a lot of his own stunts. Stunts. Jackie Chan. Tom... Jackie well, Chan Jackie did all that. Tom Cruise. John, yeah. Tom Cruise. Am I thinking of Tom, Tom Cruise? Cruise? Yeah. Well, Tom he Cruise does. does he was some actually stunts. hanging off the side of the airplane. Yes. It was. Which is yeah. They uh insane. they had like a safety harness on him, but they edited it out. But he was like literally hanging. Like, that's funny because I just watched that movie and I was like, come yeah. on. Yeah. yeah, he was really doing that. That's too really I mean, he did the one, the last one, in um, where he uh, drove the dirt bike over the cliff. Yeah. And he skydived. That was all him. Mm. I mean, yeah, Tom Cruise. I mean, he's done most of his. I mean, he did. For Top Gun Maverick, he did. Well, I can't say he did all the flying. He did a lot of the flying. Because he has all the pilot's license. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah. I mean, even in Days of Thunder. Remember that movie? Joe, do you remember that movie? I know you're a young guy. Come on. I'm cultured, at least. I mean, Days of Thunder. He did that. He did most of the driving in that. Yep. I mean, mm-hmm. like, that's crazy. I was actually, I didn't believe it. And then I was watching an interview with Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was interviewing one of the guys that worked on Days of Thunder. And they're like, oh, did Tom Cruise really drive the NASCARs? Yeah. And he's like... Yeah, I mean, he went to the training. He was, he was. If he would have kept training, he would have been really, really good. Mm-hmm. And on one of the parts, they're like, "Oh yeah, well, most NASCARs they only turn left." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, don't turn right. Don't try to turn right." And he's like, "Okay." And halfway through, he turned right and he hit the wall. <laughs> so that I was quick. like, "Oh, that quick, yeah." Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, all right." I was like, "All right, Tom Cruise is the, is legit." So isn't Keanu Reeves? I mean, mm-hmm. in the last John Wick, he did ninety percent of the drive stunt driving. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's wild. I was like, 
All right. Are you serious? The movie had so that last one oh. had the most action out of all. Oh, of I mean, my that. brain was exhausted yet. halfway through yeah. trying to. I, pa- I think I watched it in like two parts. Oh mm. my god! <laughs> I saw it in the movies, so I couldn't get up. Okay. I couldn't get up. I uh, I did last I time I went to the theaters. I saw Oppenheimer. Did you Ooh, see that? What did you I think of that? that wow! So I like everybody saying, I've heard that's seen that. I haven't seen it, but everybody that says it does not feel like a three and a half hour movie at all. No, no. So I did see Avatar, and that was like over three hours. That felt yeah, that's like a long that. movie. That was uh, insane. But Oppenheimer just it just flowed. There was so much information. A lot of people were saying so. Some people had it was hard to keep up, but <laughs> I thought it was easy. That was nice. The movie was was amazing. Oh the yeah, the acting was great. The directing was great. Obviously, you know. Yeah, that's gonna happen. But of course, of course. Okay, well, Christopher uh, Nolan, of course. Man. So I have a question. Yeah. So now it's not really lighting. I tried lighting it. Do I clear it? Because it's almost. It's, it's you almost, down. Are you almost done? I think so. It is a small. small uh, no, you got a little bit left in yeah. there. Light that. You might have to. You might have to repack it. Who knows? Yeah. Well, light it. Who no, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> that's true. He doesn't well, light it. When you're Mine, drawing, throw, light you it wanna, and pack it. Mine's going through, down it. there. You want to feel like there's the same amount of pressure as like you're drinking water through a straw. It's tighter. You might have a plug. Mm-hmm. That it's plugged. Mm. No, I think it is plugged. Take this end. Mm-hmm. Shove that in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> all the way, all the way through. All the way. Okay. All the way in, bud. Don't be shy. Not a girl. <laughs> be nice at first. Just be bashful. Be nice at first. There you go. So once you put it all the way through, uh-huh. what what a lot a lot of times happens when you go down when you start packing and you get lower to the what hole, kind of it, it'll you'll end up pushing tobacco into the hole, so into the air, yep. into, into the, the airway, instantly. into the airway. Yep. Sorry. So do I pack it first and then light it, or just no, light it, light it now. Light it. There you better? go. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, much better. You can see the smoke. There you go. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah, he's fucking cooking with fire now, baby. Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh yeah. You enjoying it? I really am. That's I awesome. mean, this really is am. a really good English. Mm. Holy moly! It's definitely an all-day English. It's not yeah. too like oh, yeah. Latin. And you're, you're like, whoa! I mean, when you said earlier that it was an all-day English, mm-hmm. I compared it to Dexter's Secret for seven twenty-four. Yeah. Because that, for me, is a, before I had that. I was, you know, fucking, you know, uh, a lot yeah. of heavy Englishes, which are, you know, that's a full body smoke. You can't really smoke that all day. Well, you can. Some people do, but I mean, for me, I, it, you get your palate gets shot. Yeah. But you know what this reminds me of? Well, can can I speak? Can I? <laughs> no. Come on, I man. What, I'm just, what reminds me? I need to finish the thought. Well, hurry up. Don't well, take be patient. <laughs> Jesus. I don't talk when you talk. <laughs> You're still waiting. Wow. <laughs> my goodness. Go ahead. No. I no, lost no. it. I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Where's my drink? I lost it. <laughs> if this was a little bit more creamier and a little bit more spicier, I feel like it would be, like if it was just up another notch, it would be spark plug. Possibly, but then it wouldn't be Ashton. Mm. Well, sp- Spark plug to me is like super high level amazingness. So I'm just saying this is like. Well, you haven't had quiet good. nights yet, then, have you? I've had quiet nights. Uh, spark plug is good. <laughs> no, spark plug is excellent. Quiet nights is better. Mm. For your palate, maybe. It's okay. Should we go into the Esoterica Tabacchiana area? Should we go down no, that road? No, let's no. not go there. Let's Should we go down go that there. road? No. Because we can go there. Mm hmm. And it'll blow everything out of the water. Not really. Yep. Yeah, no? How dare you? Oh, boy. Well, Let's it's time continue. For, it's time for another segue into another segment. Perfect time, okay? <laughs> and uh, uh, if you've been listening to the show for more than a few weeks, you know that uh, uh, my friend Michelle Stiles has uh, uh, reconnected with us. She is a surfer and model who lives over in Hawaii mm-hmm. and uh, travels all over the place. And um, um, she is uh, recently returned from a uh, competition in New Zealand. And uh, she was going to visit some smoke shops over there. Yeah. And kind of report back on things. Now, she's 
she was under the weather when she got back. She didn't have much of a voice, so her wife, Sarah, actually recorded the message in her words. So that's all we have tonight. And um, uh, she actually is going to reference uh, Ashton and everything and has a question for us at the end of it. <laughs> Easy there, Killa. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's time of night he turns to one of those gremlins. <laughs> <laughs> a little tickle in my Who throat. Danny? There's Come a on. Little tickle. A little down. tickle in my throat. So, Dave, why don't you play the uh, update from Michelle? Please. Please. Here we go. Guys and gals. First up, New Zealand. I did well there, finishing with a respectable second place. Not bad for cold water surfing from a warm water Hawaiian girl. While there, I did get to check my bucket list, visiting both black sand beaches I desire to see. The people of New Zealand have an entire generation who will not be able to enjoy Ashton products or any tobacco products as they move forward with a new law to banning tobacco products. So I wanted the skinny on this and visited two tobacco shops in Auckland. The first was Blaze and Chill, a quaint store which was not very big but surprisingly had a decent selection of brands and products. No place to smoke inside but knowledgeable staff who were friendly and helpful. The second was the Havana House, a much larger store with a great selection including tobacco, wines and liquors. The staff were also friendly and knowledgeable. Seeing a number of patrons, I engaged in small talk about the new laws here in New Zealand, such as the government placing limits on people born after December 31st, 2009, from ever buying tobacco and tobacco-related mm-hmm. products. What I've found was many here are not happy with this move, and they believe more and more regulations be will come either. as mm-hmm. this nanny state grows bolder in its Ooh. attempt to become the first smoke-free country in the world. Remarkably, they are not banning vape. So according to New Zealand, it is better to put metals in your lungs than all natural smoke. Anyway, the mood at the tobacco shops was still jovial despite these new laws and the looming threat of even more restrictive laws regarding tobacco products. We can only hope New Zealand wakes up before banning something that has brought people together for centuries. Okay, guys and gals, here is my topic. Pick any place in the world any person living or dead, and any Ashton tobacco product you'd like. Where would you go? What product would you pick? And who would you share it with? I would have Talia pick a drink she would match with your choice of product and destination for your additional pleasure. God damn. So I'll go first. I pick Ashton's Guilty Pleasures Pipe Tobacco and their Pebble Grain Canadian Pipe. I choose to see my grandpa motto at his favorite place, Bear Butte, located in the sacred Black Hills under the moonlight sitting by a campfire. Damn, because I have that's missed deep. him since that's his casting and I love the smell of guilty pleasures tobacco. I believe my grandpa would love the taste as we sit and talk the night away. I wonder what Talia would suggest to pair with my choice. And there you go. Man, that was deep, man. I don't have to start, do I? I mean, like, that's deep. <laughs> Great. I, almost, I almost cried on that one. Grandfather by the campfire? That's amazing story. I'm like, come on, dude. Like, yeah. that was deep, man. Wow. Yeah. That, I, like. She put a lot of thought into Damn, that, that hit me in the feelings, bro. Yeah. <laughs> For real. I was like, yo. Because that brought me back to being with my grandfather. Because my grandfather was in the Navy, so he loved being in the water. He loved being at the beach. So when I grew up, I was always at the beach with him. Mm-hmm. And I was always in the water, mm-hmm. and I was always swimming and everything. So for that, that brought that back to me, and I was like, yeah. oh, girl, you're going to get me like that? Yeah. Woo! Mm-hmm. All right, so who's first? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I'll just say I think she should pair that with a nice, uh, I would go Chianti. maybe Red Breast 15. Oh, oh one yeah. of the best. I think I'm going Red Bravo. Breast 15. Bravo. There's her. nothing one wrong with Red Breast mm-hmm. 15. Especially by like the said, campfire. Red breast, yeah. yeah, by the campfire. Mm-hmm. Again, the sherry cask, I'm just a sucker. It's on my mind. Mm. The whole, you know, the history behind Red Breast with the grandfather and the stars, I think that would be a perfect combo. Mm-hmm. Perfect pairing for her. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine because, uh, yeah, I want to give you guys a little time to think here. Um, mine would be one of Kurt's 2005 VSG Wizards. Oh. oh. Which is down in his humidor right now. Yeah. Kurt, the Kurt's Vault humidor with my dad in my office. Yeah, man. By the fire. 
That's that's what I would do. If we were going to get a little bit more whimsical, if you want me to pick somebody that's like, oh, you, Dad, come on, think of something else. Right. You want me to do something else? Okay. Then I would do Consummate Gentleman because I, I like this a yeah. lot with Eva Green. Oh, man. Right here in the 724 lounge. Eva Green. I would love that. I would love to smoke a pipe that's not with even Eva Green. Bear. Yeah. Oh, that's not even. Badass. Bear. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good that's pick. not even. Bear. What's... No. Those are both good picks. Damn. And I'll go Wicked Hokey. And say that I would also do an Ashton ESG 23 yeah. year cigar with Michelle on one of her father in law's boats in Hawaii. <laughs> Hawaii. Nice. Mm hmm. Nice. Bro, Any of those three would be good. Mm -hmm. Any of those three would be good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm going to go. I mean, location. Come on now. Mm hmm. The top Greece. of the top of the Acropolis. <laughs> okay. Oh, Acropolis. <laughs> Sitting at the base of the Parthenon. All right. Sipping on. What would I do? Ah, oh, it's tough. I'm thinking Avion 44 because mm -hmm. tequila, the heat. I usually go more tequila mm -hmm. in the heat. And uh, <laughs> famous 1964 version, or I guess not version, age mm -hmm. of Clint Eastwood. Oh. Mm -hmm. Wow. And any cigar because it's Clint Eastwood, and I'm that's sure he's not picky. That's dirty, hairy Clint Eastwood right there. That Prime is Clint man with no. Nope, that's punk. the man with no name, Clint Eastwood. Right oh, there. that's younger. That's that's, that's Western. That's younger. It is, yeah, man. Early '60s. Mm -hmm. Oh that's, man. Yeah, you know, fistful of dollars, Clint mm -hmm. Eastwood. Hit me with that. Ah, uh, my up. Yes, yes sir. you say yes, sir. You are. <laughs> that was fast. Or do you need wow. time? Because no, I got. I got, one. I got What's Dan drinking? Oh, what are you drinking? What would I be drinking? Oh, what if would I were, you if be I, drinking? Yeah, yeah. What, would I, what would I be drinking with a aged, very cedar, forward, spicy cigar, aged cigar? Oh, I wish I remembered the name of it. There's an Irish whiskey that's distilled in the Middleton Distillery in Ireland that you can only get in ireland that's mm -hmm. a cedar cask finish whoa and it's something the name of it is so cool and i of course forget it's like something like mad dog but not that you okay. know something along those lines <laughs> <I've had> that. <laughs> so, <laughs> that with the cedar, yeah <clears throat> that sort of name but that is a cedar cask finished whiskey and it's probably the most amazing thing mm. the most amazing whiskey i ever tasted mm. Excellent. it's phenomenal okay all right dave your turn um, I would smoke this pipe tobacco, and I would want to join two people, C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Token, while they're talking about their notes of Narnia and Lord of the Rings. That's My goodness. Good. That's... Now, it's would you cool. talk yeah. over them? No, or would you I, I would listen. They would just listen. <laughs> listen. I'm surprised you didn't do anything from Star Wars. No right? one. Right? Mark Wars. Hamill or uh, George Lucas. Somebody, yeah. My well, they weren't pipe smokers. These guys were. Pipe I but see, if they were, I see. I understand. You know? Interesting. Oh. And where would you be, Dave? Uh, wherever they would be. <laughs> over in the lock. It'd be a Waffle <laughs> House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a, in front of a fireplace. There you go. Yeah. I wouldn't mind smoking a cigar or a pipe in Oxford. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could I could I could I could hang with that. The setting really does a lot for wherever you're smoking mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was working at the cigar shop, yeah. one guy came in and said, What's the favorite cigar you've ever smoked? I can't remember exactly what he said, but I remember it was a bad cigar. Like it was not a good cigar. I was like where were you when he smoked? He's like, oh, I was on the beach in like Mexico. I was like, that's, that's why cigar. it's your favorite cigar, man, because you your your setting was mm -hmm. amazing. You have great memories with it. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that has a big take on mm. cigars too. Nostalgia. Mm -hmm. Nick, well, I would be smoking a pipe or a cigar, mm -hmm. maybe both. Um, cigar in a pipe. Why not? <laughs> um, probably a pipe. Uh, I'd probably be smoking. Has to be an Ashton product. Does it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it would be this, because this is delicious. Um, no, you know what I'd be smoking? An ESG. Yep. I'd be, I'd be smoking an ESG, and the person I'd be with would be General Patton. I have some good stories. Sure would. 
Um, and where would we be smoking? Somewhere in the field, man. Somewhere where he did battle. Where I he mean, would actually smoke. Huh? Where he would actually smoke. Right, yeah. exactly. Um, I mean, he's probably going to be what? He was a six, he was he was a five-star general, six-star general, something mm -hmm. like that? Five-star general. But, I mean, my God, the stories that, just to be in that man's presence. I mean, the stories that I've heard of how disciplined he was and, you know, oh, the, the story of when he went into uh, to the hospital or something like that and somebody was hurt. And he, he slapped him and told him to get back out in the field. Because yeah. <laughs> there was other men that were were going through worse. And the guy had like a broken hand or a broken finger or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he slapped him and he, went, he told him to get back out in the field. Like that's, that's, like that's a, that's the guy right Yeah, there. that's mm -hmm. one of those conversations you wish you could. It would be, that. yeah. I mean, it would be, so there'd be two people. They would be, it would be General Patton mm -hmm. or Winston Churchill. There you go. That's. I mean, I those two guys, I mean. You bring them to Churchill be like, they named this no. after you. Yeah, I probably would. I'd be geeking out. <laughs> you missed so, so much. <laughs> oh, my God, look at this. But, uh, uh, yeah, I'd be probably be geeking out so bad. But, I mean, if it was General Patton, General Patton, it would be in the field where he fought. Hmm. Um, and if it was Winston Churchill, and I, oh, well, it, this is on my bucket list. It would probably be in the shop that they have his chair in in England or mm -hmm. that that's a that's a that's something that I would love to do. Nice. So if, and drink if it was General Patton, it'd probably be bourbon or whiskey, of yeah. course. And if it was Mr. Winston Churchill, probably be probably be scotch. Mm -hmm. Uh leaning more towards cognac for him. Would it be? Yeah, the cognac Just my immediate like was, he, every was day. he a cognac guy? Somebody's yeah. got to look that up. Was he <laughs> a cognac guy? You know he had cocktails set for every like hour of the day. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm and different, was, different ones. So, yeah. What about you, Joe? Okay. I'm giving so, you a lot of time to yeah, think about this. Yeah, a lot of time. This. So, I'd be on the beach in Puerto Rico. Okay? Mm. So, half my family's from Puerto Rico. So, oh. with my Uncle Speedy. Speedy Gonzalez, that's his name. Speedy! Nice. Speedy! He was Speedy. Green, Green Beret in Vietnam. Uh, Special Forces. He was, you know, New York State Senior Detective for SWAT mm -hmm. and State Police. So. God damn. Love cigars. It's really he's really the only one in my family that really enjoys cigars. And uh you know, I would love to bond with him, just hear some stories set on the beach in Puerto Rico where you know he grew up. Where in Puerto Rico? Umacao. Oh, all right. So that's Umacao. where from. Yeah. That's where oh, my cow. So oh, I'd yeah. love to be there. My cow. It's yeah, over there. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, I would probably Jesus. be smoking the ESG. Yeah. He likes Nicaraguan tobacco, though. Mm -hmm. So I might bring, you know, some of the La Symmetry? Roma. Or Symmetry, because that has a little so bit of Nicaraguan. Maybe yeah. Nicaraguan, brother. It's a good call. Mm -hmm. But I'll probably bring some of the La Roma or San Cristobal stuff yeah. as well, too. Yeah. But uh, ESG is hard to beat. Mm -hmm. Drinks. Ooh. Now we're in Puerto Rico, so we have to have Bacardi at some point. Have you been to the factory? No. I need to. I've been going there for the last 18 years. Good. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Are you surprised, Talia? Not even a little. <laughs> we got we, me and my wife have gone there so many times. <laughs> we met oh, hey, when guys. we first started going. Mm -hmm. Well, when I first started going, when we st first started dating, we met the one of the tour guides. Now the tour guide is now the ambassador to po to Bacardi, mm. and we see him there. His name is Christian. We see him there every time we go. Nice. Mm -hmm. But he is. It's you. been that long that he's moved up the chain. Okay. But yes, he's Good a for great that guy. guy. Oh, absolutely. That yep. So a little bit of Bacardi to start the morning. Of course. Okay. We'll have a uh, Medalla, which is a Puerto Rican pilsner. Mm -hmm. So right. maybe the ESG will be good for that, or even the Ashton Classic. Mm -hmm. Okay, on the beach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, Red Breast Twenty Seven. All right. Which is my favorite whiskey that I've ever had. If you ever Breast Twenty Seven gotten the I chance to try it, ridiculous. it's a Red Breast Twenty Seven. I, I have never tasted a whiskey. That you taste like fruit at the end, like guava, yeah, yeah, yeah. mango, papaya. Like it doesn't even make sense no how you taste this on. exotic fruit at the end. It's mm. so yeah. Throw a pina colada in there. That's my day. <laughs> Come on, you're in Puerto Rico. You <laughs> Come gotta on, have a, you, you gotta, gotta have a mojito. Gotta, mojito, yeah. Mojito. You gotta have a mojito. Have bark, Bacardi. Bacardi. That could be in a mojito. Yep. Uh, it uh, absolutely is in a yeah. mojito. <laughs> yep. So yeah, that's my day. That's a good day. Mm -hmm. Everyone had some really good picks. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't pick a celebrity. I'm sorry, but no, that's no, all right. That's she that's didn't fine. Either. 
Michelle didn't either. Michelle didn't. Yeah. No. I mean, you don't have to, but. No, we don't have to. I mean, I always, like, for me, I've been in, like I said, the last couple of shows before, I was going to go in the military, and then I kind of got conspiracy theory eyes or whatever, yeah. and I was like, ah, I'm all <laughs> fat. And then I went into law enforcement anyways, but, um. <laughs> But yeah, like uh, that's and always the tobacco me. business. Yes, um, it's a story exactly. itself. Right? Yeah, and the, you know the military and the history of the military, the Marines, the Navy SEALs, the Navy, all that Merchant Marines, all that stuff. I mean, the whole thing about anything military, it has intrigued me. It's been really interesting to me, even though I've never been in it. But it's always interested me. Have you had the uh, Hooten and Young whiskey? I have not. It's made by Norm Hooten, who was uh, go Black figure. Hawk Down. <laughs> Black Hawk Down. So, yeah. uh, it's hooting good. Yep. At uh, <laughs> the whiskey and cigar bar that I used to run, we uh, had a military night. Mm -hmm. One of the owner's sons, he was, I believe, a ranger. And so he had his whole group come in. Yeah. And we had Norm Hooten cigars paired with Norm Hooten whiskey. And wow. then we actually had Norm Hooten from Black Hawk Down do a Zoom call with those guys. Wow. While they were smoking cigars, drinking his whiskey. And. Damn. All those guys said it was, you know, like that was their hero mm. before they were in the military. Yeah. That's who they looked up to. So that was that was awesome to see. Mm. That's awesome. That's a great Cigars thing. and whiskey mm -hmm. made that happen. Mm -hmm. you know? There you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 Another contribution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So final thoughts on the consummate gentleman here? It's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really good. I mean, it's complex. It's smooth. It's creamy. It's an English yes, almost without is. without being an English. <laughs> I mean, damn. <clears throat> it's damn good. Yeah, it's very smooth, very <laughs> creamy. It's, it's got damn good. It's got just enough of that mesquite to yeah. keep make things really kind of interested. Um, and at the same time, it's not so much of it that it burns out your palate. No. You know, so you really can, you know, repeat this and enjoy yeah. it over and over. Mm -hmm. um, this is This is really, really nice. I'm Agreed. glad we finally have some. Me too. <laughs> yeah, like I said, like, this is my first time, so this is this is great. This has been a lot. I now really you can enjoy sell it because yeah, you know how it tastes. Yeah, it I is. smoked it. And, yep. yep. You can exactly. you can tell them firsthand how it tastes and yep. how different it, would, it is to cigars. You know, yeah. it is different. And Talia enjoyed it too. She smoked it until it was gone. I did. Go. Very good. Uh, how do you think the pairing was with the uh, red breast? Perfect. I mean, the uh, rabbit hole. Red breast? Oh, I I'm still thinking about it. Now we're thinking, thinking about, about the, the Irish. We can, now cut that out. Out. Uh, we can cut that out, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just edit it. How do you no, that's not right. think that's about Irish too, whiskey? So I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> we're going to have to go to the, take a trip to the bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to the bar. <laughs> to the bar. Right over yonder. Mm. How do you think the tobacco went with the rabbit hole? Oh, Imagine was it as never. good with a cigar as it was with the pipe tobacco? I That's hard. Ah, uh, it's different. Two different dynamics there. I mean, yeah. it's the the sweetness, <coughs> the sweetness of the rabbit hole brought a good amount of sweetness out, more sweetness out in the cigar. With the pipe tobacco, it made it more creamier. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in a lot of English. You kind of get more of that. Um, you get you taste a lot of the Latakia in there, but it brought more out of the, it brought the Virginias more out of it mm -hmm. than it did anything else. Mm. Yeah, and it was just just rolled right into your into your palate. Just I beautiful. thought the whiskey accented the tobacco more. Mm. Like mm. I tasted more of the tobacco with the whiskey. Yeah, and with the cigar, I tasted more of the whiskey. Yeah, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's good. Yeah, the it's one perfect. made the the whiskey stand out. The other made the tobacco yep. stand mm -hmm. out. Exactly. Yeah. I like the difference in that. It was <clears> nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, thank you both for being with us tonight. This was awesome. Absolutely. Some good talk, right? Some good Hell conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it's about. <clears throat> good smoking, good yeah. drinking. Oh, yeah. What do you think? You think you might uh, come back on the uh, show here? Oh, if you have me, absolutely. You if think? you're in the area, think about we'll it. have you. I live 28 <laughs> minutes away. Yeah. So. <laughs> 28 yeah. minutes. Exactly. It's like he's going to be on the next episode, <laughs> yeah. not just blowing smoke. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is great. I love this. Oh, good. I'm glad you had a good time. Here. All right, that is our show for tonight. We'll be back next week, next Monday at 8 o'clock. Don't be late. We'll see you then. Stay smoky, my friends. And that's not just blowing.